So in this podcast, I'm super excited to bring you guys some information about one of the fastest growing types of food businesses due to 2020 and everything everybody went through last year. This year, a lot of people are not going back to their jobs. They are actually starting small based food businesses from home, believe it or not. And a lot of states are not necessarily loosening up the laws, but they are evolving these laws and changing them to make it more feasible and easier for people to actually start small food businesses from home. And they're even expanding the amount of money that you can make. For instance, Florida just increased it to $250,000 in food business that you can actually sell from home. So this video is gonna be all about how to make money selling food from home. I'm gonna give you 10 specific things that you need to do in order to find out for sure if you can, and then what you can make and everything you kind of need to do in the first starting phases of doing this. Now, these are in a specific order, um, so I would definitely go through them and check them out in the order I'm giving you. Of course, you can, you can go through them and if it works better for you to kind of mix them up a little bit. But these 10 things are probably what I would say the most important things. Being a food entrepreneur for the past 12 years, I know a little bit about food and selling it online and even uh, starting from home and then starting from scratch. So I've had quite a bit of experience doing this. And these are the 10 things that I particularly would tell you if we were actually doing a consulting call uh, through my consulting business, if you needed help, I would say, look, this, 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 and this. So number one, let's get right to it. Know your state law, specifically. Every state has cottage food laws on the books, except I believe it's New Jersey. New Jersey is the only state that I know of. Um, if you know of a state that I don't, uh, let me know down in the comments. But New Jersey doesn't have any specific laws allowing you to do this. So every other state, you have a great opportunity to start from home. But it's specific to the state as to how much you can make, what you can make, the process to get the product approved, and then obviously where you can sell it once you have the product, okay? So there's a variation going by each state. Damien, how do I find that out? Go to Google and type in cottage food laws and then your state's name. Now, you wanna look for the, either the first up to one, two, three, four, the first um, results up to the first four. Somewhere in there, there's gonna be a government website. You can look for .gov, or if it's you know Florida, it's .florida, um, something to that effect where it's an actual state website. That has this specific information. There's a lot of people who have information out there, even people on YouTube here that talk about making food from home, a lot of that information is actually incorrect. Um, so you need to make sure you go to the state specifically. Now, number two, incorporate and get food business insurance. Now, and by the way, really quick, this is our podcast, uh, which I'll upload to YouTube as well. So if you see the big microphone on YouTube, you see this in front of me, this is for our podcast down below. I forgot to tell you in the description section, there is uh, links to all of our podcasts. You can listen to us on the go, or if you happen to be at work or something, you want to catch up on some information. We had over 250, how many episodes we have? 250, 250 episodes or so. We've got over 60,000, 50 or 60,000 downloads. We just got it up and running. So we're really excited about that success. So take a look at that podcast. So back what I was saying before. Number two, incorporate and get food business insurance. Now, most states do not require you to be incorporated, but here's the risk. Even though you're under the cottage food law as a business and you're kind of operating as a business because you need to claim all that on your, on your taxes as well at the end of the year, if there is something that comes about, somebody gets sick or if you happen to have a broken piece of glass from a spatula or a plate or something at home and somebody has something to, to, to go to an emergency room or go to the hospital, and they turn around and sue you, you have the potential to lose everything that you have on a personal level because your business is not separated from your personal life. That is something that can happen. A lot of states do not require you to be uh, incorporated or create an LLC. Limited liability corporations allow you to have a business and create that bit of protection. And then having food business insurance is also something you should get in order to protect your business. So take this as a business, do not take it as a hobby. I've mentioned this in numerous videos that I've done about food business types of food business from home and such. Please do yourself a favor, listen to my advice, try to get yourself whatever it is that you need legally, an LLC and insurance to make sure that you protect yourself. Take this, consider it as a business, not as a hobby, okay? Number three, work on one to four items. Well, Damien, I've got like a, a dozen items, I would love to make all of them. Don't do that because in order for you to create a profitable food business from scratch at home, you don't want to overextend yourself. You don't want to get out to a dozen items. I mean, you may have a dozen. That's great. Start off with one to about four, maybe one to five, okay? See how they work in the marketplace. Take them to farmer's market, tell, sell them locally, go to certain events, whatever events it is that you can do in your state, do that. And then if one or two of those don't work out, then you've got 12, good. You can try the other two. You can kind of mix and match. See what works and what doesn't because every food product will not necessarily sell great within the community that you're in, right? Because you wanna make sure that if you've got a great list of items, keep it, that's great. If you brainstorm, you come up with 100, fantastic. But don't start with more than about one to five, okay? Because the next couple of things are gonna come into play. Number one number f is, the, is the packaging. So that brings us to number four. 
Number four on our list is creating the packaging. So if you have a multitude of items and you've got a multitude of different labels and you've got all these things that you've got going on when you start packaging the product and you have a variation on everything, that's gonna be a little bit overwhelming. You need to have about one to four, try it out, create your logo, get your packaging, get a brand, which brings us to number five. Make sure you work on your packaging and create a logo. And if you can't do that yourself, go to Fiverr. Fiverr.com is actually a website where you can get a freelancer to create a, a logo for you. And again, if you want to check the description in the description section, there's a link down there. Um, they'll make a logo for you. You tell them, hey, I've got baked goods. My name is Susie and I've got Susie baked goods. I do cookies. They'll have a designer design it for you. You can get it for anywhere from 20, 30, maybe 50 bucks. Very low investment. All of these types of businesses from home are fantastic in what's going on right now because a lot of people don't have extra money to start this grandiose business, which is why starting one from home is so amazing. Start small, get your logo, get an idea of branding and, and, and create the packaging that you wanna put it in. Now everything's different. It could be a bag, it could be a plastic jar, it could be a container, spices. I mean, it could be a multitude of ways you can package spices. Whatever the product is, make sure you think about the type of packaging, okay? And that, that brought us to number five about logo and branding. And then number six, go to a website called festivals.com. This is a website where it has tons, I mean, literally millions, it has all the states, have um, all kinds of uh, festivals and different farmers markets and different events. Festivals.com, and then you type in, I believe, your state and then your zip code. That's gonna tell you a list of all kinds of events that you can go to in your state to sell. Farmers markets are just one. Many states allow you to go to a multitude of different types of events, so don't just limit yourself to uh, farmers markets. Make sure you check out all of the other ones that are available in your area. Okay, number seven, this is really, really important for income and tax purposes. Keep all of your receipts. Receipts from items that you are buying to make your product. Keep receipts from all of your ingredients, your packaging, your labels, your ink for your printer. It doesn't matter. And by the way, if you're starting from home, there's an enormous, I did another video on my channel here. You can check it out. It's about tax advantages and tax benefits. Starting a food business from home, there is a ton, ton, trust me of really great things. Bring it to your accountant. I'm not an accountant. I'm not going to give you tax advice. But I am going to tell you, take this, this video, write down the list, bring it to your accountant and say, hey, look, I'm starting a business in 2020 or 2021, and I'm going to be, be doing this uh, a food business from home. So here's a handful of things that I want to deduct from my taxes. Okay. And they'll go, oh, they'll let you know. And if you had a good accountant, they're going to dig deeper and they're going to be able to find you a lot of benefits to it. Okay. So keep all of your receipts. Number seven on the list, Make sure you do it because all of your expenses, all of the sales that you have, obviously the difference between the two is gonna be your profit. That's what you're gonna get taxed on because that's your actual income. So keep all of your receipts. Number eight, open a business account. Don't do this under a personal account. Do it under a business account. Why? Because it makes the bookkeeping much easier. Plus the fact that you're running a business, you should separate your business from personal expenses because your accountant can make it super easy to understand where the money's going. You can track expenses and track your income, track your sales. Okay, if you've got a, 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 a portable uh, card, you're actually swiping at one of your events and you've got it hooked up to your, your Android phone, you got it hooked up to your uh, Apple phone, whatever it may be, and you're taking uh, payments right there at the event with a debit card or credit card that can go directly into your business account. Okay, so that opens up the opportunity to take other types of, of, of payment other than cash. Okay, and of course, never, I don't take checks. I, when I started out a long time ago, I never did, but don't take checks. <laughs> So open up a business account is number eight. Number nine is network everywhere you go. So you're in a certain city and you go out shopping. Hey, mention to people, let them know. Go to restaurants and cafes and say, hey, can I leave a brochure or some information about my food business? Drop off leaflets, drop off uh, business cards. Anything that you can everywhere you go, start creating that awareness of your product and like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna be at this event. Can I put this up on the wall of your restaurant? You have a cafe or a coffee shop. Can I put this up here? I'm gonna have it. This is a way to network and get people aware of who you are and what you're selling. Okay, number nine. Number 10, this is also crucial, crucial. Create a website, no matter if you're allowed to sell on your website or not. That's not the point. You wanna make a website while you're starting from home. Down the road, your business will grow. That's your idea, that's your objective, obviously. When you get into your commercial kitchen or you get into an area about you know a year, maybe two years or whatever, maybe even could be a few months, and you have a website already made, you can transition that into an e-commerce business and you've already got the website, you've already got social media, you've already got that, that presence online, that's gonna allow you the opportunity to start selling on your website, okay? So then it can just transition to e-commerce and not just out of your home. So create a website. If you don't, don't know how to do it, you can actually go to Fiverr also. They can create, people can create websites for a couple hundred bucks. They can make a real basic, simple one for you to get started. You can do it on Shopify, you can do it on Wix or Weebly, or GoDaddy. But e-commerce will be the transition that you'll make when you get from your house into a much bigger pool of people where you've got millions of people on Amazon, Walmart.com, 
uh, Etsy or eBay, wherever it might be. So that is a great way to have and great reason to have a website and then you can transition that, okay? So these are 10 things that will help you figure out how to make money selling food from home. And I highly recommend you definitely take a look at this. And if you've got questions about the process, don't be hesitant to ask. We make a lot of our video content around you guys, your questions. So if you're a subscriber, ask me. If you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe and then get some questions and comments down below. We'll get to that answers as soon as possible. So I appreciate you guys listening on our podcast and I hope you guys enjoy this on YouTube. I'll see you on our next video.